Platt subdivision of the recorded four pounders that shows the right way of Martingale. And again, once again, I kind of highlighted the little stuff that we're going to use to try to extend Martingale up to hit the comet. So, purpose of coming here tonight was kind of introduce us to everybody. So, you know, I can't go to Comet before I have permission to get to Comet. I mean, it's going to cost you guys to get to Comet. So I, I'm looking for a sense of direction on what we need to do to get uh, a form of easement across the township for that little bit of little bit of crossing. Is uh, everybody have any questions? What what are they? Who's building on this ten acres? The it's called Lockett Commercial. It's going to be about 52 commercial units. Kind of got a layout here. They, I think they presented a bit to Homer. This is Homer Glenn. And I think they presented to Homer Glenn. Homer, you know, obviously the question is this time. It's great. How do you get there? So now that's what when you say commercial units, are these office buildings? Uh, uh, is it retail sales? I mean, no, there'd be no public sales. It's more like no retail. Right. If you if you ran a tent rental service. So it's a small little industrial rent, okay. Right. Um, storage units, things like that. What kind of, what kind of, okay, 15 units of 100 square feet, 50, 50 units of 500 square feet. How many square footage overall are you putting in there? Well, they said 52 units, not 15. 50, right, 52, 52 units. units. I don't know that they've decided right now on building. Now, they don't want to spend a lot of time with architects and things until they actually know that they can get Okay, them. all right, I get that. Is this going to be warehousing where we can expect trucks down this road? No, I would think, no, this is, See, the way they is more like a little uh, I, I, office. I, I, I can't speak for this board, but I'm going to tell you right now, they're going to want to know, with the issues this board has been plagued with, with the trucks on other roads, they're going to want to know, before you even ask them, they're going to want to know what kind of use this is. Sure. Because, you know, they're not going to give you... <laughs> And again, I can't speak for the board, but I'm relatively confident they're not going to open the doors, do what you want there. No, and, and that's really what I'm trying to find out tonight is what, yeah. what questions do I get okay. have to go back to the developers and the builders and get Sorry. answered. Yeah. And then once I get those answered, you know, where do I go forward? Is he talking about the current zoning is of that parcel? I can't picture it. I don't know. Do you know if it's currently zoned as either commercial or industrial? It's, uh, no, I, I, I would be really good. You don't know. I don't know. Yeah, that was, that was one of my questions. Um, <coughs> yeah, without, without knowing what you're doing, this is a mystery, and mysteries need to be solved, and I can't, I can't approve it. Well, I don't think we, anybody was looking for an approval tonight. It's, it's really my... Expose. You, know. well, you don't seem to know anything about this. You're asking to cross our property, which has a lot of safety restrictions. We have a, a path there. We have people there. You're going to have cars, trucks. We don't know. Um, how could you even ask for permission to cross when you don't know what you're doing? I'm really not asking permission tonight. What I'm telling you is we're going to be coming to ask you for permission. Here's a kind of like a, like a heads up. You know, so you're not blindsided when we when the whole thing does come together. And again, to find out what, what the procedure. Nobody really knew the I, uh, Well, I also procedure. I also understand Jerry can maybe say something. The state of Illinois has rules and regulations to solve problems like this. This isn't the only land and block piece of property in the state of Illinois. So I would suggest maybe you look and to see what the state statutes are. As far as I guess the easements of necessity. Uh, I mean, there is law in that in Illinois. But the other, the other factor here that is material to your request is the fact that this is not just property on the township. This open space, which has its additional set of restrictions. and 
capacity of use that, that might come as a result of that? Sure, I think the biggest question is, is in terms of what the end is, what, what is the end use going on in those categories? Okay. Yeah. Yes, that would be, you know, that would be, you know, that would have been my questions, but also I would think, and, you know, Mike is our highway, our road district, our <coughs> highway commissioner, uh, even calculating how wide of a roadway you would need and things like that is going to depend on whether or not there is going to be uh, semi trucks and stuff. I know right now there's issues even at 159th Street with an unmountable medium and trying to make sure there's proper width and uh, things like that. So it would be difficult to even uh, consider. You know, again, you, you don't know that it would be warehouse or commercial, but. You know, most every commercial entity needs to have deliveries and have semis and things like that. So, uh, me personally, without knowing all the particulars, I would have to guess that in some capacity there is going to be uh, larger vehicles uh, moving through this area. Um, and then, um, as uh, our attorney had mentioned, you know, there, there are different restrictions for different types of property that the township needs to follow. Uh, but also, the township is never, uh, it is publicly funded property. Everything that the township manages is the taxpayer's uh, property. So we would not be in a position to just, you know, freely turn the property over to uh, another interest. So there would have to be all of that type of negotiations. And I'm not sure, if we don't know what the current zoning is, um, I would think that knowing that um, there are uh, residents involved in all sides of this property other than north at the comment, there, there would need to be some sort of a public input process as well, in addition to the logistics and legalities as to whether sure. we could even do this. Yeah, my point, if my we point was, you know, what is your process? Mm -hmm. Do we have a public hearing? Do we schedule? And I bring you know, people, builders and developers in? Do we have a... Uh, you know, what, what does the process get through? Well, just keep in mind, this is not something that we deal with commonly. Right. I, I don't know if we have ever uh, done this. I've not been here since 1836, but, uh, you know, it's not a common practice. And so for us to, you know, just to be able to do that as well, I do know uh, that, you know, being that it is in the village's uh, jurisdiction, they would have a major role in some of these things, but uh, for it's not a common thing for public property to be uh, handed over uh, for development purposes. So it's, in my opinion, I, I don't know the answers. We would have to find out. Uh, what, on a public hearing? Uh, or what, what procedure would have to take place. I think we'd have to come to some sort of terms well, yeah, to begin right. with, uh, before we could even talk about public hearings and things like that. Right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you're going to have, you know, assuming that you can carry this forward, you're going to have a series of public hearings, uh, one for probably a map amendment. I, I doubt that this is currently zoned as your intended use, but I, I don't really know. Um, and, and that will entail uh, public hearings. Um, what you are asking of us um, could potentially involve a public hearing that we would want to do again because we really want to space property. This is not just property that the township owns. Uh, it is a special purpose property. And um, so that adds additional requirements and considerations, you know, on the township board. So like I said, you've got a, a long road to hope. We have other approaching comment and comments all. We've got a long road, so before you come to us, make sure you can get to us. And so that's you know that's why we're at this stage first because I can't go to comment until I know I can get the comment. And you uh, and hopefully you will do uh, kind of an introductory preliminary thing with the village to uh, garner some of their thoughts. Uh, I think they've already. Builders develop. I think they've already gone and started some process with the village. Okay. They really only came to me for the access and the issues of the access. I, see. I okay. haven't been involved in this. Mike, may I ask you a question? Um, have you spoken to Monica Commercial? Uh, no, I, this is the first I heard of it. See, they to be honest with you, I thought it was an IDOT. 
Oh, okay, so they have come to the office on several different, their builder and different representatives since approximately January. And they have, so I don't know if they've talked to the village or not now, they told me that you sent them to our office to get permission from me. And that that was the only way that you were going to approve a new roadway is if they came through Martingale. And I said, well, normally, you know, the highway commissioner would go through the board as well and some of these things. But I said, you know, I didn't really know. Have you talked to the village? I, and they I, said the same thing about the village. I, I'm not saying the line, but it may have been so long ago that I don't remember that. Okay. That sounds like something I'd say that if you're going to cross township property, I think you better start okay. there. But I don't remember saying that. Okay. I don't remember talking to them. Okay, so I, I'm just so, you know, I talked to several people that came to the counter and I said they had no drawings, they didn't have anything. I said, you know, this isn't the process, just coming to the counter. I have no authority to do anything. We have to come to the board, which Mark has recently, uh, their firm has just recently been hired by Monica, correct? I thought that's what you told me, like around before the 4th of July or something. Yeah, so he yeah. called me and I said, you know, you've got to, you, you've got to put stuff in writing. You can't, you've got to bring stuff to the board. You can't just, you know. Well, and, I told you. When so we, he did when put it together. Me, he told me, well, all hand is looking for is a letter. Yeah, he's like calling me for a letter. I'm like, what kind of letter so are I, you looking I said, for? let me call Pam. And I called Pam. That's how this all is here. Yeah. Because I'm like, these guys are telling me they just need a letter. I don't think that's right. No, you're right. And so Pam and I, kind of, she kind of agreed to kind of direct me to do this initial presentation. So at least I don't want to use and aware. aware of the situation. And now we'll probably go forward with a little more structure. But at okay. least you know it. Here's, here's where I'm going to come with this. If you're going to want anything for the road commission, here's what I'm going to say. We have 52 units of an unknown size. Let's throw a dartboard out there and say 500 vehicles, uh, 10 vehicles visit each vehicle once a day. That's a thousand trips on what is essentially a residential road. And I understand you've got a nice little drawing there. It goes right from Bell Road right in. It's not how they're going to get there. They're going to get there how Google tells them to get there. Which means they're going to be getting it if they come from the south. They're going to be going. And all these 500 cars every day are going to be going past senior housing. Now this is it. This this it's like you have a you have a residential street here, and we're going to build a warehouse beyond it, and we're going to bring everything in through this residential street. That is essentially what you're doing. Well, I know it looks like a commercial street, and and in, in one sense it is, but it's also a residential street to get to senior housing. I mean, well, and don't forget with the Google Maps, what we've learned is that <laughs> they don't realize roads don't go through. And to the west of this property is a, a dense subdivision, Gold Milk South, is it? And, uh, well, Dawnwood and Oak, Oak, all of that. So, you know, same thing. They, you know, vehicles will be trying to get to their property, but those roads won't go through. So, I, I, I want to make this perfectly clear. I am pro-development, 100%. We have to be practical. And to put a subdivision, a, a, a warehouse subdivision, that you have to access it through a residential area, it's, it just doesn't seem like a good starting point. And, it, and that's essentially what you're asking for here. Well, not through the residential subdivision, just at the same residential entry. Well, wait a minute. You, I know you're saying they're just going to go off Bell Road. They're not. Anything that comes from the south is going to go into the other, the south entrance, Come in and go down and go straight in. Because that's how Google's going to route it. And I, I got truck drivers with 80,000 pound trucks been driving their whole life, look at a Google map that tells them this is where the family truckster goes, and they try to take their truck down there. And I have people at these meetings screaming at me because I can't control the trucks on the road. And you know, they go right past all my signs that say, no trucks. No trucks. Do you, do you I mean, they scream at me at this On this Martin Gales road, this, this road here where you're looking at, where you're saying they're going to come in and turn here, mm -hmm. this road comes down and curves here and comes right. out the Bell Road here. Right. So anybody that's coming from this direction is going to drive yep. this first light and they're going to go around right. and past all the senior And then there's the weight limits, which none of these yeah. roads yeah. are set for. And I don't care what the sign says. This is what Google told me. That's the way I'm going. So that's a huge issue you're going to have to overcome. I don't know. 
again, I'm 100% pro-development. Boy, I've been bitten in the butt. Once already, you know. Once bitten, twice. Well, we have to make sure whatever we said, that it, the capacity is there and that you know, the infrastructure is conducive to you know the uses and so and well, you know you, you can't give us the uses for sure and right. there's well, a lot the of only thing I questions is about the semis because as an engineer my concern was you see the sharp curve yes yeah, so absolutely that's not a semi turn no it is not it's just not a no semi that's a lot right that's easy to say but if one, one tries to get there it's going to be tough to make that turn I agree so I agree Mark one thing I see which is, you know and this I want to talk to you guys first but one thing I'm going to take back because I really think we need to improve the turning off. Well, the you there. know, when they came to our office, and I mean, this is just talking because I know you're looking for, you know, you're trying to get some input from our community and from us as well. When they came to our office, they also, originally, they had just said there was, this was the only way that they could get in. And have they explored, like, coming in off of 143rd or any of those? Because there are other properties. I had well, said, have you reached out to those uh, owners? Because I, I thought those were also like maybe Booth or you know some people that were looking at commercial development off of 143rd. I'm thinking commercial, commercial. That's just a thought. I'm sure. not sure. suggesting yeah, anything. And I can't answer it. Okay. Because I don't know what their process is. Okay. If, if, does anybody have anything further? We appreciate you coming and bringing all of this. The action item would normally end the order of our agenda would go under new business, which is at the end. But I, you know, we always try to give professional courtesy, yes, uh, to allow you to be able to speak. And then we do have public input that we'll go to next. If you're finished. Okay. Thank you. All right, now I would like to open up the floor to the uh, public in general and uh, signed up to speak. Christine? Yeah. Um, on this grant, I'd like a little more clarification of what the problem is. Because I know you want to go in the executive session, and usually executive session is only held for personnel matters and salaries. So i really like a better clarification of what the, this the problems are with the grant. Okay. Um, well, there is a, the item is on the agenda. I'm not uh, sure that uh, we're at uh, liberty to discuss, and I'm not sure that the word problems is correct. Um, there has been uh, some hurdles that the uh, county and the district are working on to. Uh, well, that would still be public knowledge. Would you like to finish? Or yes. Do you want to interrupt? Oh, okay. So there are there are some issues that they are working on. Um, we can go into executive session as your agenda shows. For these are examples of uh, items that you can go into closed session for potential litigation, uh, purchases of property, all different types of things. So uh, at this point, that's. That's what the agenda says, and we will discuss it further when we get to that item on the agenda. Okay. Uh, next would be Dan Hagen. Um, here, once again, about the windows. I know at the last meeting you said you, I probably wouldn't have to come to this one because you would be reaching out to me to let me know what was going on. I didn't hear anything. This marks 25 months that we started this process for windows. It was July of 2017 when we first went to a meeting to tell you that the windows were failing. The windows are 19 years old. I went over there yesterday, climbed up on the bleachers to where I could see the second floor where every window right now is open, by the way, every single one of them, um, by about an inch. Um, the upper one still has not been repaired correctly. Um, so I, I know you went in, you said that you could smell mold, water. Well, I bet you can. Um, the south side roof is missing a whole row of shingles again. Our season starts in three weeks. First home games are in five weeks. 25 months ago, we started this process, and I, I don't even know what to do with it anymore. I, I feel... Uh, you know, at one of the park and rec meetings, uh, Trustee Krushak said that it moves at a snail's pace. 
I, <laughs> I think a snail would be done by now. I, I, it's mind-boggling. The, the windows, the, the, the cement the sills that you talked about, angled just like they should be, at least the ones I can get to. It's a really easy test. All you gotta do is pour some water and see where it runs. It's not the sills that are running out, it's actually the sasps. So anybody that's gonna tell you that those are pointed wrong, then how did the sash rot out before the sill? So now we're gonna hire a structural engineer to go in and look at a problem. It's, it's a waste of money. We're talking about building event centers for a million plus stuff. We can't even maintain what we currently have. It, it's, I, I don't know where to go with it anymore. Thank you for your input. We've talked about this and talked about this. Um, we have professionals that have said uh, differently than you, and you're certainly entitled to your opinion, and I thank you for your input. Uh, we will be discussing it further uh, in the agenda. Uh, Jennifer. Hi. I'm trying to get clarification on going forward with the event center project. At the June 10th board meeting, you guys stated that you were motioning it to look into estimates for an event center at the, tip, at the Trentina Farm. And at the open space meeting that I went to on 619, you stated that the board had approved the motion to go ahead with the event center. So I need clarification on which is it. Are you just looking into estimates or is there approval from the board from that last meeting to go ahead with this project? Well, I don't think either of your statements were according to the agenda and what was approved. I thought that the uh, motion at the last meeting was to, and I don't have that agenda here with me, but I thought that was to reach out to professionals to see if there were grant opportunities and things like that. There's been no monetary amount approved, contrary to what you said, Deanne, about the event center or a million dollar. Nothing has been approved. They're basically, it's my understanding, they're still exploring uh, whether this is feasible and whether there would be funding available through grants and things like that. At the open space meeting, you had said that this would have to be put into a special meeting and that that would be posted. I don't, I don't recall. I did, I did report the meeting, so it said that what you had said was... What, what are you saying, to, this? You're saying that I said this would have to go to a special that meeting. That this would have to go before a special what meeting. What is this? This would be the Trantina Farm Project for the event center. If, if any final decisions were ever made? Yes, yes. there would have to be a special meeting. I, I don't know all the procedure. That, is there a date for a special meeting? There's not, it's not even close to the the okay. place that you're talking about, as I said. If you do, correct. I, I'm sure that is the board would have to move forward and make approvals and figure out funding. There's going to be proposals. There's, I mean, this is very, very premature. Okay. This is so just still just very, very much so okay. in the exploratory. The committee is just trying to find out if it's even feasible and some associated costs, whether there's grants available. That's what they had asked. It's my understanding. Permission was to uh, to interview uh, professional services to see if they had some ideas for grant funding and different things like that. That's all I'm aware of. Okay. So right now. Okay. Well, I, I don't. You know, I'm not going to have a debate or discussions where you're going to continue. This isn't a public no, hearing I, I or anything. No, I have another question so. on another topic. Okay. Okay. So I need also. Sorry that Karen's not here to answer this as well, but the last two board meetings you guys had discussed a uh, glitch with the Veterans with Disabilities exemption. Could you clarify that for me? Because I happen to be a family that partakes in that, and when I called Will County to ask them, because Karen in the last meeting said this was a Will County issue and a glitch on their part, they have no knowledge of this. So well, I, I can't speak for Karen or the Will County, but I can tell you what was told to me and what some of the residents have contacted us and thanked, thanked Karen's office for their assistance. The county did have some sort of an error that caused the uh, veterans um, assessment to be an error. And it was discovered on the local level, and the county did rectify it. That's what I've been told. That's what the residents told me as well. But again, you know, 
the thing about it is, is you don't have to be limited, all of you. You're not limited to coming to meetings and asking questions under public comment. All of us answer our phones, get emails, we'd be happy to meet with any of you as well. So she's not here this evening, but I would suggest that you just reach right out to her in her office, and I'm sure she can give you more information. Um, then I would like to go on to, is it Chris? Momo? Oh, just here. Oh, okay. So you don't, you don't wish to speak? Um, and then John Fleming. I, uh, <coughs> see another res a resignation from the Parks Board this week. Is there going to be someone replacing that individual? Will that be, will that be posted? I'm, I'm working with uh, the other committee members right now to get the committee back to full strength. I would imagine by next month. That position or that? Yeah. Well, I mean, right, now, it, I right now they'll all be appointed. I mean, I, I'll bring in recommendations. They'll have to be appointed by yeah. the board. Because that, I mean, that's, we're mid, uh, mid thing now, so it's not. No, I just, again, yeah. Yeah, they're not the village, but the village posts when they have an opening for positions. And I'm just wondering if you can. And then I our, our ordinance posts in the beginning of the term because they're four year terms, and then our ordinance has different procedures when vacancies are throughout the term. Um, and then going back to the event center, I, again, I know you guys, I hope you have looked at a, some sort of number you have in your mind, but I would hope a feasibility study is going to be done, number one. And number two, I, I would hope that you kind of survey the community, the, the, the township and the village. And then finally, who's going to pay for that? I mean, I don't know what type of community center you plan on building for a million dollars that puts in your open space fund. But that's going to be an awfully small community event center. So I don't know. I, I know it's going to cost more than a million bucks. I put on there a million dollars if you read, obviously. But that's what's in your open space fund. Is this going to require an additional tax? Is it, are the taxes going to be increased because of this? And I'll I don't know you about your million dollar or what you put on something or whatever. I'm not aware. Well, you referenced it earlier. No, Dan had mentioned something about a million dollar event center. Yes, in the post, just in the beginning here. I don't know what you've posted, but again, you, as you mentioned, I'm assuming that because there's a million or less than a million dollars in open space, you're assuming that. I don't, we don't have all of the answers. Uh, I will tell you this though. Uh, I'm sure there will be plenty, if it gets to that stage, I'm sure there, sure there will be plenty of public opportunities for input. Uh, what we have been told by some members of the public right now, uh, including our senior citizens who have come to the senior uh, committee meetings, um, this is the largest uh, building that we have for community activities. Um, and even the village originally was going to be able to allow our seniors who they go down to um, Cross of Glory for their meetings when uh, there's an opening in their schedule. Uh, we don't have anything, say, for over 100 people. Um, whether or not uh, this would be, uh, like, like it's been referred to as small foes and fancy and whatever, to the best of my knowledge, out of committee, that has never been a discussion. Um, and the discussion has always been to try and find out what can be garnered for what price and that the main capacity would be to be able to uh, accommodate groups larger than a uh, hundred people, which a hundred people is really pressed here. There's probably about 25 parking spaces, things like that. Our senior group does have to, like when they want to do their Christmas parties, they do go to the to uh, and the price has been steadily going up every year. And so they have also expressed interest in being able to have a place in the community that is affordable um, and that would have the capacity. I think the committee is my, I, I'm on the committee, uh, it is our interest in trying to find out what is possible. I know we've looked at um, this, the garage next door, our maintenance garage is a, is a prefab metal building. We've looked at uh, buildings similar to that at uh, Benston's and throughout different places in the area. So um, I think 
perception uh, or what's being said the building's going to be or cost or look like, it, nothing has been, this is, at this point it's just really rumors, nothing has been determined. And it is investigatory, it is still investigatory. The, the meetings are at 5 o'clock, so we can't, we can't attend those. Some, some people can, I can't. The minutes from those meetings are very limited. They, they really don't tell us much. Other than that, I've been coming to this meeting and reading your minutes. We don't know anything. So forgive me if I'm asking questions that may have been asked at the previous no, meeting. I don't know how many people. You said somewhere between 100 people and how many. How, how, how big is this going to be? They're trying to get a facility that is, uh, they would love it to be between 100 and 300 people. Who's, who's that? Oh, I'm sorry. Who's that? The committee and the community that have asked. We do not have, as I said earlier, this is the largest building that we have for community activities. So even when we have uh, community events and stuff, we've rented tents, which has been very expensive. There's, so there is an interest. There has been expressed interest. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, don't ask me to forgive you. You're certainly welcome to ask us any questions. And you know, Jen, you email me a lot. You, you certainly are welcome to phone me. Uh, I'm happy to try and fill in where the minutes or where things are missing to try and give you as much information. Or any of our trustees, please feel free to reach out to any of us. Um, you don't have to wait until once a month. We can definitely talk and try and give you as much information as we can. Uh, I'd like to move on to Steve, Steve Ballage. Yeah, um, when you talk about the stuff with the uh, grant, uh, the lady from the county didn't come, she was supposed to show up, but I got all the emails and all the conversations that we had. Me and uh, Mr. Prislong hopefully got it straightened out, but we don't know for sure. But anyway, we'll talk about that later. Um, as far as the events, um, I did some research on it. Uh, you're allowed to tax 0.05% or maintenance and uh, people, you know, whatever, and management. So now 0.05% means it's about $20 per 100000 assessed value. So it's going to cost everybody, so if you decide, you don't have to, it says May, the statute says May. So that means that it could cost somewhere between 50, 60 bucks on people's tax. Maybe not under your leadership but with this board, but the next board or the next board, they could do it because it's in the state statute. My attorney pulled up the statutes for me. And you can go all the way up to 0.1%. So if it's 0.1%, you're looking at about 100 bucks. And you guys said at the last meeting, Mr. Fian said, it's a for profit. And that's why you're doing junk in a trunk. I, I watched the video, I put it up all over, everyone can see it. It says, he said it's for profit. That's what he said. Well, okay? I'm gonna that means it's, a direct, it's direct competition with existing businesses here. And I, I didn't know we went to a socialist township or a communist township for that matter. When you're, what's going on is you're saying that we're going to be competing with Purple Onion for a funeral or Blueberry Hill for a shower, or Donopoulos for a wedding. You know, that's not what the township's supposed to do. It's wrong for government to compete with private enterprise, especially around here. Our businesses here, they're doing okay, but they're not doing gangbusters. They don't need any more competition. You know, so you're gonna hear a lot of screaming from me because I do not like this. I do not like getting taxed whether it be today or next month or in five years or in 10 years because the tax is allowed by state statute and unless somebody changes it, it says may. So that means at any given time, anybody can do it. So I'll just go up on the premise that I believe you guys, you wouldn't tax us. How about next year when you get a new uh, board three years from now? Are some of that people gonna want it? I believe they'll be good. But then you go to the next group. At what point is it one of these groups from the township going to go, I'm going to do the tax? Because they can't. So that's one of the main reasons that this is bad for our community. We're already paying through the nose to the state of Illinois everything to turn around. Gas, we're going to have a progressive tax probably. All our property taxes are going up, and we don't need to have another tax. 
Well, I would just say that no, nobody here has talked about the tax, and just because you can tax people, there's a million statutes that allow you to build community centers and tax people, uh, but they do also require uh, usually referendum or there are guidelines and now, stuff. It's a it's a point okay. five. I mean, I got the statutes. It's point five percent automatic, and if you want to go up to point one, then you have to have your board call Steve. a town meeting. Steve. I didn't interrupt you now. Oh, you're but saying something that you're, you're skewing the well, truth. Well, you were skewing things and I didn't I said up. facts. Steve, you I'm going to ask you to be in order, please. Now, yelling over me, trying not to hear what I have to say, isn't going to make your points any more valid. You've said them. They're on the tape. People can make their mind up. I just want to be able to try and explain some of the points that you have made. Uh, that I don't necessarily agree with. And again, at all along, the goal is not to add a tax or to do anything, and I do believe, and this is an open space, and I do believe that there are statutes that would require any of those types of spending limits that are not available to probably go to referendum or all different things. But again, that's for another day because this is all still exploratory. It's not a competition. I don't know about what Tom said for profit, but you can't turn a public entity into a for profit entity, and we are a public entity who provides services to our residents. We do currently do something very similar to what you mentioned. This town hall is currently used for bridal showers and baby showers and other functions besides the not for profits. So it I guess you could say that we're already competing with the Purple Onion, that, if that's what you're saying. But I will say that we do try to keep those rates very reasonable. Um, they do pay for the extra electricity and air conditioning and different repairs and things that need to be done. And there are some residents that would not be able to have these functions if they couldn't find an affordable venue to do it. So uh, that is why we do what we do. And again, we are trying to listen to everybody. And I thank you for your input. Now I would like to go on to uh, Maureen. Um, just to kind of beat a dead horse, let's talk about the uh, Tarantino Farm event center. Um, I personally don't think it's necessary. I personally don't want it. This is my opinion. The thing is, I've talked to a lot of people, and there seem to be a lot of people with the same sentiment as I. What, how do we decide if it's actually going to happen? Can we put it on a referendum? Do we have to put it on a referendum? Can you guys just decide? How does this go? Well, I mean, it would depend, again, on what type of a center. You know, again, this is still very much early and exploratory. It may not happen. It, it may not be feasible. It may not be cost, you know, effective. I think that is one of the reasons why uh, the uh, committee had talked about, as they have done with other open space. Um, open space is not is not currently on your property tax bill right now. But it's not receiving tax dollars. So they've uh, always tried to find the township has always tried to find revenue sources. For example, the farm leases, rental, you know, leases, things like that, to keep them off of your tax bill. And I believe the conversation in committee was that it would be possible to do some events to try and cover the cost of the building. Again, the goal is to not assess the tax. So I would say that once there is some clear direction, clear pricing, some <coughs> approvals from the board, I mean, we're a long way from that because there's not really been any real proposals brought to the board. Uh, and again, feasibility, whether it be professionally prepared or whatever, I think the committee is trying to look at the feasibility. We do have other um, uh, organizations in our community, like the Art Guild and different ones that really don't have a facility to be able to do things in the community. And they, would, they do try to use the high school and the public schools, um, but they are assessed a fee, and an unaffordable fee for them. And a lot of times they're just not available uh, for the rooms and the places are just not available for you know these types of organizations. Um, we've been uh, it has been brought to the board's attention um, and committees 
that we do provide uh, sports facilities for not-for-profit organizations uh, so that the kids can enjoy and do participate in things. Why not be open to places where the seniors and where other you know types of groups and stuff can do so. That is what we're doing. We're exploring and we have kept it open. We have kept it on all the agendas. We've had discussion. Uh, does that answer as much as I can answer you? I don't know. No, because I just want to know ultimately, okay, let's say everything got approved, everything's beautiful, everything's wonderful. Who gets the ultimate say so in whether we go ahead with this? Well, does this go to the to the residents of the township or does it just the board decide? Who decides? Well, I think it just depends on whether we're using existing funds, whether we're able to put something together using existing funds, and then that would be like any expenditure that the board works with existing funds. We prepare a budget every year. Uh, we we try to take input from the community, and they're put in open meetings, and some of you are saying, you know, stuff. Who knows? Maybe there will be a public hearing. Maybe it just depends on what the plans are and how, if it actually goes forward. The, the junk in the trunk event, does that have to follow the 90% Homer Township resident requirement like every other group in town when we want to use something? Well, the junk in the trunk event is not a, it is a fundraiser. So we don't have a 90% requirement on fundraisers. <coughs> Just like we never required everybody from Homer Fest or, you know, so. so there you go. All right, let's move on. Uh, our accounting. We are at the juncture in our agenda where uh, the accounts receivable and payables have been presented to the board and some action is required. I'll make a motion to accept for discussion. <laughs> so we have a motion by Krizak and a second by Fian. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, will the clerk call the roll, please? Trustee Cruzak? Yes. Trustee Kalis? Yes. Trustee Olford? Yes. Trustee Fian? Yes. Supervisor Harris? Yes. Motion carries. We have no line item transfers uh, and we have no request for funding this month. Uh, this will take us to Highway Commissioner Mike Revivo's report. Uh, the road program should begin soon. Um, predominantly concentrating on one subdivision, Chickasaw. It's our oldest subdivision. It'll be a full grind down the gravel. There's a lot of issues with the curbs there. Um, it's a subdivision I've been trying to get to for a long time. I wanted to do it a couple of years ago, but the little American was in there cutting up and doing some work, and I didn't want to put a new road in and have them come and cut it all up to put new water in, so I waited until they were done. They're there now. Uh, we have some drainage issues on Choctaw. We're doing a lot of curb work there. Uh, we're getting a lot of water pumping up out of the ground from our beloved friends uh, north of us in Cook County, trying to put some drainage issues to take care of that. It's destroying the road and making it difficult to drive in the winter. We also have an issue in the unincorporated area. We have a drainage project. We're working on 163rd near Pepper Mill. It's behind uh, Windmill Estates. Uh, it's a rather large crossing, cross culvert. We have one large culvert there now. Uh, it's old, it's rusting, we're getting some cave-ins. Um, I hope it doesn't turn into an emergency. We're monitoring the situation, we're out for bid. We should open that bid later on uh, this month, the exact date, I'll let the board know when it happens. Uh, we're replacing it with, uh, and the, in the past few major uh, drainage issues I've had, we've used um, concrete box culverts. This is kind of marginalized. I don't think I have to go to that. But we will be using two 48-inch culverts. Uh, we already have them with the special order, special kind of culvert. Um, I really want to, this will require some road closure, I'm sure, at least for the day, if not for two. Um, not keep everybody uh, appraised of uh, what's going on and, and what we plan on doing. And again, once uh, the bid is done, uh, the bid opening is, we're off the bid now, once the bid opening is ready, I'll let the board know. This is a pretty, pretty big project. Um, I went ahead and ordered the um, 
uh, the culverts for it. Because if we wait a couple of weeks to award the contract, it adds four weeks to it because they're special, they have to be specially made. So we kind of wanted them ready. So we, we took the initiative and ordered them. So when the contract is awarded, we'll, we should be ready to go. But uh, I have some concerns with that road right now. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I present the June 10th regular board meeting. I'm looking for a motion for approval. So moved. I have a motion by Kinsek. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Alford. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the June 10th uh, regular board meeting minutes signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? Uh, abstain? Hearing none, motion carries unanimously. They have also presented executive closed meeting minutes for review for release by August 14, 2017, November 20, 2017, April 9, 2018, and May 14, 2018. If <coughs> you would like to release these, a motion would meet. I'll make a motion to release all four August 14th, November 20th, 2017, April 9th, and May 14th, 2018. I have a motion by Kuzak. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Alfred. Um, is there any discussion in open session that anybody would need to make or do? Uh, uh, well, the, you know what? Uh, all those in favor of approving the four presented, uh, not approving, releasing the four presented executive session minutes, closed minutes, meetings as presented, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. All right, we're going to the supervisor's report. Uh, we'll start with senior housing. Uh, all the rents and leases are current, and there are no, currently no vacant units available. Uh, on June 5th of 2019, the Homer Township Fire District was dispatched to respond to a resident's or a tenant's fall monitoring system. They gained entry to the unit by crowbar, resulting in extensive repairs needed to the entryway doors and the door frame. Uh, I met with uh, the Homer Township Fire District, and we discussed how this could be avoided in the future. Uh, it was suggested that uh, the township would consider installing max boxes on the exterior of the buildings. Um, we would have to call a joint meeting with the tenants to enlist their cooperation since they are private residents and reach an agreement between them, the district, and the township uh, to, for them to agree to have it be placed uh, in the max box so that the firemen would have access to it. At that time, the district recommended that a box with a capacity for four keys, one per each eight pod units, uh, be mounted at each of the eight freestanding buildings. Uh, staff did uh, research and contacted the company recommended by the district, and we were learning of the various options. However, there is not an option for four keys uh, in, a, in a, four keys in one box, and the price is on the box. The prices uh, do not include installation of the boxes. You've been provided a uh, memo, inner office memo uh, from staff showing the breakdown of the uh, cost of the max boxes and uh, the different options that were available. There uh, is an individual <coughs> max box, one for each unit. So for those of you that don't know, there are uh, four units four individual units in eight pods. So there's, actually there's 30 units, 31 units. Uh, so we would need, you know, a minimum of uh, 30, 30 keys, uh, 30, 31 keys. The cost for one max box uh, for each unit is $183 and we estimate the cost just to purchase the boxes to be about $5,856 for number, uh, option number one, one key. 
Option number two uh, only allows two keys at $285 each. That would come to uh, approximately $4,560. There's another option that uh, they have a box that has a capacity of 10 keys, which, you know, just to be, you know, when, when somebody's responding, I think it's even uh, challenging to make sure that the district knows that there's one box for four units and where it's located. So you wouldn't want to go more, you wouldn't want to have this thing mounted, in my opinion, you wouldn't want to have this thing mounted, you know, on two different buildings, you know, to get into, you know, several different units. So uh, that would probably, it, this one accommodates up to 10 keys, that would be $330. Um, and uh, so if you bought <coughs> each of those, it would cost approximately $2,640 if my calculations are correct. Uh, the other one is uh, has a box that would suffice for 50 keys. Um, I, the district, uh, I don't believe, would uh, go along with that, and I'm not sure the residents would want one box that has keys to every unit. Uh, in it, in some sort of a centrally located place. And the problem is, is it was with this particular circumstance. You have different firemen and different people, chiefs, different ones coming and going. We fill out emergency uh, contact information with the districts. They know their cell phone, my cell phone numbers and stuff. You know, they're dealing with an emergency. They get there as soon as they can. And if the person doesn't open up the door, they are going to do that. Uh, we would hope that if we had a Knox box and they were apprised of where it was, uh, that they would be able to use that and um, be able to avoid having to uh, destroy the door frame and the doors. Uh, again, uh, I, I think, to be honest with you, I think the easiest way to be sure that they know that there is a Knox box, the person that's on the call, is to have one per unit. And again, the residents do have to consent to have their key placed in it, uh, in the Knox box. So um, these are the prices. I'm looking for some direction from the board. Uh, How long before have those been up? Uh, they would start being built in like 2005. Okay. And then how many incidents have we had? Um, so far required this, us to replace a door. So far, this is the first time the fire department has there, actually an broken. Answer. I'd rather replace the door because obviously, what comes with this is they those notch boxes have to be wired in, and there's a fee for that too. Well, no, yeah, they, because they, if they open them, it sends a signal. No, no these no. just have a key. Our, we mm -hmm. have notch boxes where required any commercial entity yeah. is required, and the um, the fire district also determines that we are like a commercial, so we have it on our buildings and stuff too. It's just that they have, uh, the firemen each have a universal key sure. that opens it up. That's why you have to have a key inside the box for them to get to. Right. And the key has to always be more, has to be current too. So for example, um, you know, it's different for us because we're, we're not, you know, changing ownership frequently, but in a rental facility, the residents, you know, could be there. Some have been there for, you know, since the beginning of time, but some, you know, after a year or two, move on. You know, you just don't know. So you have to always uh, make sure that you're working with the district and the tenants to make sure that there's a current key in the box, too. I don't know if I, I mean, personally, I don't know if I want my key to my house in a box that is not being recorded, you know, or, or at least if someone knocks a box off the, you know, or breaks into it, there's some kind of signal that says, hey, someone broke into the box. Okay. And then obviously, if you if you have to get permission from all of them, you're not going to put one here and one there and one here, right? I mean, technically, would it be overall or? Well, I'm, I'm thinking that's why I would think that we would need to have meetings with the residents and find out uh, whether or not there was, and, and again, when a new resident comes in, they could say no, you know. Right. From what I understand, talking to uh, Dave Fricker from the district, that um, we, I just, we I would have incident, to get their permission, and yeah, we can't force them. Years, one incident in 14 years, I don't know if it's worth the expense of it. Yeah, I'm just relating what the district had told to us, and uh, I'm looking for direction from the board. Okay. 
What, what did it cost to replace whatever they broke? <laughs> you, just a rough number. Well, we are still working on it. And initially, um, we were told that the uh, complete a complete frame and door needed to be the one special order door needed to be replaced, and we were talking about uh, possibly fifteen hundred dollars. I've gotten some second opinions. I think we can do some of the repairs. Um, of course, the tenant um, is responsible. They, you know, had not provided the number. They have owned that they are responsible. They did not. Uh, provide uh, any contact number from the monitoring system or whatever to be able to find out how to get in there. And the fire department, they've claimed that they've given that number now to uh, the fire department that apparently there's some sort of a code or some, oh, there's a key code that they could have entered through. Uh, but they didn't, the family did not uh, make sure that the district had it or the district wasn't able to get it or whatever. You know, there was some glitch, which is possible again, moving forward. Well, having been a fireman for a number of years, a lot of fire calls, when, you know, you don't know why that door is locked. You don't know who's on the other side of it. You're going to open it up. You're not going to call and wait for 15 minutes. Um, and I, that, my personal opinion is we ought to have one on each door, and it should be part of the lease agreement. You put a current key into it. And that's the way it goes. I kind of agree with you, Tom. I mean, it's just more safety for our seniors. I mean, period. Yeah. We yeah, have to do something. You, 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 one of the things you've got to understand is not every fireman has a key. Correct. There is one key on each truck. We have when the When you take the key out of this holder, the horn goes. And it keeps going until they put the key back. So they want a so, key in a nap spot. You're not, you're not going to have some guy walk around and take the key out. And go yeah, they're the saying it's the right to get with um, I mean, I realize it's about five grand to put one on each one, but I think it's it's worth it. And so far, it's not going to walk the wall. They can hold them down to where you literally have to destroy the box. And if somebody's going to go through that much work, you're going to go through the front window. It's held in with eight nails. It's called preventive maintenance. I mean, it, it, it'll help. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I want one. You know, if, if I dial 911, I don't care about the front door. I want to go to the hospital. That's what right. I'm yeah. saying. I don't, I, I, I don't I want to propose something if we're not able to do it. And they were saying we have to do it prospectively yeah. because we don't have an interlease. So. Right, we don't have an interlease. And the district uh, led me to believe that they have, uh, their legal advisors have forms that the residents are required to fill out and hold them harmless and stuff for the keys and yeah. for the things and so I'm not sure if we could force them to do it or not. But well, you know, I mean we have a key on a, a knox box on here. We don't want one too bad. Fire code says you're gonna put one on. Well they they interpret this building to be of a commercial nature. Well that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I mean all commercial buildings Right. Much have an Only commercial. Yeah. There is no yeah. ordinances. But the way it's explained to me, and again, I'm not taking a position one way or another. I'm just trying to give what information was given to me. Um, there, there isn't. It's only required for commercial buildings at this point. Well, that, that's that's um, basically a commercial building. I mean, Grays is residential, but it's all commercial. Building. It's probably so residential rather than commercial. Um, I think. You know, I, I, I'm not sure about this, but, you know, obviously if the fire department requires uh, a whole harmless type of uh, letter, uh, I don't think that our lease specifically addresses that. However, I think our leases do have a provision that says that they will abide by the rules and regulations of the township board. And therefore, if we enacted a reg regulation requiring that they execute the documents necessary to have an access key, they would be obliged to do so. Um, but again, I, I don't have the lease in front of me, but I believe it has that provision in it. Okay. Well, are you looking for a motion at this point? Well, I mean, I, I don't necessarily have to have a motion unless you're ready to make a motion. Otherwise, I was just looking to find out, you know, how the board wanted to proceed and to get information as to whether or not uh, again, I was of the understanding that uh, from the district that this has to be a cooperative effort with the tenants and they would be glad to have a meeting with them and try and get people to 
voluntarily uh, provide a key in the next box. But again, uh, the suggestion was that the township uh, pay for the max boxes because they doubted the residents would want to do that. <laughs> well, I, I can sort of agree with that, but it might even help with your insurance. I, I'm not aware of that. I know. Yeah. Well, I don't know. My, my opinion is we put one on every apartment. we got to do something. I mean, just for preventive. Just for the preventive uh, maintenance itself for the seniors. Whatever that might be. I mean, I, I'm looking at what the, the district recommended. You know, well, obviously we've gotten three prices. I, we should move forward with something. Period. Yeah, well, and the district did recommend that we do enlist in college joint meeting with the tenants as yeah. well. So I would think first before you know, we would make any purchases yeah. that that might be the way to go. Uh, I'm good with that. Okay, then I will work. Uh, to see if we can't schedule some sort of, uh, it's probably going to take a little bit of time, but maybe we can uh, schedule some sort of a meeting with the tenants mm -hmm. um, and get some feedback. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice to hear what they have to say. Yeah, and perhaps, uh, I mean, it could be posted, but if perhaps mm -hmm. the board could, uh, if the board wishes, they could uh, attend. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move on. So, uh, going to the Town Center Park and the sports fields, uh, all of the baseball backstop and netting has been repaired and the insurance plan is closed. Uh, there is an appointment to meet with the structural engineer tomorrow to evaluate the tower. Um, the Township Hall replacement work, all the paperwork has been completed and the supplies are ordered and we're waiting for an install to be scheduled. Culver Park, uh, the baseball field fencing repair work has all been successfully completed. Um, working with uh, HAC President, uh, they give an offer for an uh, installation, donation and installation of six uh, two and a half inch caliper, eight to ten foot trees to be in, uh, donated and installed to replace uh, some of the dead um, ash trees and as an installation again for uh, foul balls. Uh, this is uh, in honor, they're planning to do this in honor of their 60 year anniversary, so of course we would definitely work with them, get Julie out there, make sure every, everything is, goes according to schedule. Um, the Culver Park Detention Basin, the IEPA grant project, the construction work has been completed. Uh, we're concluding the grant reporting requirements and payouts currently in the administration center. And we're moving forward with the contractor to begin uh, the three year maintenance agreement schedule. Uh, I provided all of you with a copy of the final report that's been filed with the Illinois Environmental Protection Agency, the uh, grantor of the grant. Morris Park, uh, there's been some glitches after Julie and things like that. Um, basically, we're in the same general area, but um, I am recommending, I've given you guys a map, I'm recommending that we move it over to the west a little bit um, and have the entrance uh, uh, or overhead door and ramp uh, angled so that you would get to towards the end of the gravel road and you go out to the right. There's currently like a bush line and stuff keeping mm -hmm. you from right. so instead of at the complete end where there is a lot of underground facilities and another option was to the north of the concession but the main comment lines run, uh, run through there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and there are irrigation systems and so, so it's going to have to be a little squeeze in there but um, that is the current uh, situation, so uh, if the board does not have any objection, we'll move forward with the rest of it, uh, trying to develop an actual site that we can use for the permit, a site yeah, like that. The next order is uh, the administration end of the reports. Uh, Sidney Hayes uh, has an engagement renewal proposal for accounting services and uh, requesting a motion directing the <coughs> supervisor to execute the engagement agreement. I'll make that motion. We have a motion from uh, Kayla. Do we have a second? I'll second. 
We have a second from Curtis Act. Is there any discussion on the motion? Uh, uh, hearing none, um, will the clerk call the roll, please? Trustee Payas? Yes. Trustee Terzak? Yes. Trustee Fian? Yes. Supervisor Myers? Yes. Trustee Oford? Yes. Oh, yes. Motion carries. Regarding the uh, uh, recording and publishing of the township board meetings, um, I have gotten some further information. I did prepare a memo for the board. I will read it for the uh, general public. Um, so, uh, some members of the public have requested that Homer Township facilitate the videotaping and website posting of its monthly board meetings. It has been established that anybody can videotape and publish the open meetings of Homer Township. Ideally, a nonprofit organization like LCTV would conduct the taping and publishing as a community service, as they currently do for some other local governments. They are currently able to provide the service. I uh, uh, spoke with the director. Um, and they possess the necessary equipment, the funding, the processes, and social media sites to publish. They are not required to store the data and the records indefinitely by state laws uh, like the township would be. I have spoken with the director several times uh, that while they're open to uh, providing that service, they at this time have not been able to confirm that they do have adequate personnel to take on this extra, extra work that they have in the um, if something changes at this point, this is what, as of this day of the meeting, this is what I've gotten as far as from LCTV. If Homer Township expends public funds to facilitate the videotaping, there are additional costs, requirements and regulations, FOIA, ADA, etc., imposed upon the township as a governmental agency. Um, I have previously reported that the process of Homer Township videotaping the meetings and publishing them on the township website requires facilitating at least three separate functions, which have been the previous agendas and minutes. We would need video camera equipment and personnel to film, manage, and upload the data. Uh, we would need to establish the format, media, methodology, data storage capabilities, equipment, and personnel required to publish. Uh, we would need to integrate the recordings into the minutes. Uh, we would be able, need to be able to comply with FOIA and maintain permanent storage records as required by law. Uh, our township IT team has continued to explore and research uh, viable options for the township uh, of doing this both in-house or through a vetted contractor. Uh, we are not planning to live stream the meetings. At this time, they are reporting that if the township wishes to do this in-house, they believe it could be accomplished for approximately $10,000 per year. This estimate is based upon the cost for equipment and storage of data. It does not account for the cost of staff or personnel required to film, upload, and or manage the data. It also must be noted that if the township takes this on, there must be backup equipment, uh, plans, and manpower in place to assure reliability of, uh, on an ongoing basis for the monthly meetings. Um, this is only an estimate, and there could be additional costs required to upgrade township equipment and operating systems to accommodate the enormous amount, which is terabytes, of data required. Uh, they reported that they will continue to investigate the cost, reliability, and security, uh, providing access to township operating systems, et cetera, of allowing an outside service contractor to perform the entire service. If the board wishes, further information and proposals could be pursued and brought to the board uh, if we get uh, an outside service to it uh, completely. So those were the options uh, that were presented to me as of this day. Yeah, I, I, I would like that. 
to look in a little more, see what our, you know, what the IT people want to say. Of having, some, having an outside firm yes. uh, look mm -hmm. at those options? Okay, so did you want to make that a motion? Uh, if, we, yeah, if we need to, yeah, I'll make that motion to um, research the outside sources. If it, yeah, the service yes. provider. Yeah. Of yeah. service. Of having an outside source to perform the entire service? Yes. Thank you. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. A second by a motion by Kenny, a second by Alford. Any discussion? We're just looking to look into this. We're not spending any money right now. No, it's now to go and get proposals okay. in addition to what we have here right now. Okay. Agreed. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. No further discussion? Uh, we'll talk about the well. <coughs> Trustee oh, Kalis? I didn't hear it, sorry. Yes. Trustee Kalis? Yes. Trustee Kalis? Yes. Trustee Overt? Yes. Supervisor Myers? Yes. Only yes? Okay, motion carries. Almost there. Okay, so the, uh, the HUD, the CDBG grant program agreement documents between Lackport Heights, uh, Sanitary District, Homer Township, and Will County. Uh, from our last month meeting in June, have all been executed by all parties, including the county, and were returned to Homer Township. Uh, I believe there was uh, some sort of a miscommunication between uh, the Lockwood Heights Sanitary District, the engineer, and Will County regarding a draft of the bid documents that were put forth. It was only a draft. Uh, it's my understanding that Will County, the Sanitary District, HUD, the Township, and the Engineer will continue to work together to clear up any miscommunications and get the project back on track. And at this time, uh, if there is any further discussion uh, on advice of council, I would recommend that they take place in closed session. Uh, I don't have anything from Karen uh, regarding the liaison, and so I'd like to move on to the Town Township Committee reports. Uh, let's begin with the Events Committee. Uh, we received a letter from Trustee Kruzik offering to serve as Chairman of the Events Committee for Committee Ordinance. Uh, as Supervisor, I will recommend the Board appoint Trustee Kruzik as the new Chairperson of the Committee, and it will require a motion of the Board to appoint Trustee Kruzik as Chairman of the Events Committee. We have a motion by Alford. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Second by Fian. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, um, all those in favor of appointing Trustee Kruzik as the new events chairman uh, of okay. <laughs> new chairman of the events committee, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. All right, uh, thank everybody uh, for the Township Parade, all the volunteers, uh, all the officials, the participants, uh, it was a great event. Uh, again, couldn't do it without everybody contributing to another successful year. Uh, John is gonna be doing these reports in the future, unless you would like to jump on board right now and do right. the party in the park. Okay. Right. So party in the park and the story walk trail challenge and movie in the park. So this year they are going to be a cooperative effort uh, for the board's uh, approval last month uh, between the township and the Lincolnway SRA and the township uh, library to combine all three of the public events at Center Park on uh, the date to, that you guys worked on that, July 22nd. Well, that, well part of the park yard the events moving forward then? Because we always had any parks in Iraq. I don't know that just because we do it once, does it... Uh, I'm, just, I'm just curious because I, I hear it's the time is wrong. For well, part of the park, it says 5 to 8 at 6 to 7.30. Well, the uh, request that they put into the administrative office is this day, this time, 5 to oh, 8. Oh, so they're, they're making it more hours this time? I can only tell you that they put in the facility. Yeah, it was always in August, too. So you're the one that told us they changed it to July. Okay. Yeah, they put in a request in their insurance for their DJs and okay. or, or um, bouncing house and what have you. And the facility's yep. use dates they gave it, or times were well, 5 to yes, 8. So like I said, they just shut one year by 5 to 8. And it's usually an hour and a half event, but if that's what they want, I'm good. I don't know, maybe they, wanted, yeah, maybe they wanted to 
you know, move it up towards the story want challenge and be inclusive or whatever. I honestly don't know it, but okay, cool. uh, those were the yeah, times sure. and dates. And um, the story walk challenge is scheduled from the library to occur between 7.30 and 8.15. And then the uh, Incredibles movie will begin at dusk. So uh, we hope this will be an enjoyable family event for everybody. And uh, let's move on to the open space planning and operations. Uh, Chairman Tom Keen. All right, um, our flyer and application and have been uh, finished. I don't know that anybody could give them out. I had I showed up. Some people, some, but uh, I don't know where that's been, been right now since they were just finished. Most of our advertising we're trying to do using social media, media and free events and free sources. So there shouldn't be anything, any chart cost for us doing that. Uh, it's been in the, I believe it's been in the home of Horizon, in the community calendar, it's on the website. Um, we have put some flyers out on the counters. Um, we're going to try and ask, you know, some of the other places that they can get some flyers and stuff too. Uh, but, you know, we're limited in what we can do. But I know you have a meeting coming up, so maybe that can be discussed. Yeah, we'll find we'll set it up at the, at the meeting. Like I said, I've seen the flyers, I know they're finished. Um, I had a handful of them, I put them out. I don't know if anybody took any. I haven't heard of anybody that anybody has signed up yet, so um, we'll find out. We'll de determine this at our meeting on Wednesday. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, Park and Rec, uh, Jim. Well, uh, there is no report outside of the resignation letter of Trustee Cruz for the Parks and Rec Committee, so I guess we need a motion. So. I'll make that motion to accept the resignation of the trusted crews that's in the parks and rec committee. Okay, we have a motion. Do I hear a second? No, second. We have a motion and a second to accept the resignation of Trustee Kruzik from the Park and Rec Committee. Uh, is there any discussion on the motion? Mm -hmm. Hearing none, uh, will all those in favor of accepting the uh, resignation signify by saying aye? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. And then uh, last but not least, our Senior Citizen and Special Needs uh, Chairman, George Alford. First of July meeting. Next meeting is Tuesday, August 6th. Very good. Okay, uh, new business is um, whether or not it is up to the board, but is uh, the request for the um, easement from the gentleman who uh, landmark and, um, oh my gosh, I can't think of the Monica commercial. Um, I think it's clear that we need more information, uh, and so I, yeah, I was just going to say I don't think we are tabling anything because I, I think we need more information. Oh, we need much more information. No, I, I agree. I mean, it's a total mystery, even with the person putting it on. So, yeah. <laughs> so I'd say, I would say by, I would say by unanimous con consensus, yes. uh, no action at this time. No. And then uh, uh, we've gotten the dates for the TOI uh, annual educational conference uh, for November 10th through the 12th. And uh, if uh, the board desires, a motion would be required approving the uh, officials' participation, participation and expenses. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. So we have a motion to approve the board particip participation. The officials that wish to participate. How many times are we going to get the vote? Anyway, the expense. We understand. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, uh, will the clerk call the roll, please? Trustee Kalis? Yes. Trustee Kruzak? Yes. Trustee Fian? Yes. Trustee Oper? Yes. Supervisor Meyer? Yes. Motion carries. Yes. Thank you. Under old business, uh, just that we have a monthly update from the Clark Mosquito Abatement to their monthly program for June of 2019 that's been presented. And at this time, if the board desires, uh, do we need to go into executive session? No, I, it, it's my understanding of the status of it. There really is no need to go into executive session at this point. Yeah. I'm good. I have nothing further. No. If, Anybody does, we're just kind of waiting to be updated at this point. Mm -hmm. I'll make All a right. motion to adjourn. So we have a motion by Cruz. Do we have a second? I'll second. We have a second by Kayla. 
Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. We are adjourned.